In this demo, we will demonstrate Android in the Cloud's graphical performance. We will compare the performance of cloud, cloud hosts on local networks and wide area networks over 3,000 kilometers distance from the local client, despite the six orders of magnitude difference in the distances of the two systems demoed, graphical performance is shown to be quite similar. Ascender's Android in the Cloud runs Android containerized images in the cloud. The remote graphical output is streamed remotely to the local clients. We demo two remote Android systems, one on a local network, and the second via a wide area network more than 3,000 kilometers away. There is more than a factor of a million difference in the distance between the cloud host and the local client. These demos show two aspects of graphical performance, frame rate and latency. We will now see examples of Android apps executed both remotely on a local network and via a wide area network 3,000 kilometers away. We will now demonstrate a simple application in two windows. First, we will do a simple calculation and we will see how the graphics reacts. Now we'll do it in the second window. One is remote and one is local. We now will demonstrate a cal calendar application. One and the other. Let's see if we can tell the difference. The left one moves rather smoothly. So does the right. Which one is remote and which one is local? We can now demonstrate how we can change the standard launcher, the Google launcher, to a launcher that we took from the Play Store called the Smart Launcher. We start the Smart Launcher on both screens and we can go into applications. We can take the calendar application. We can do the same thing in the leftmost screen. Both scroll smoothly as before. We can go back to the original launcher by the back button and then the home. We now will do an example of Google News. Here we see the two windows. We'll go into the news. We see that this is actually in a different language. It's actually in Dutch. And the other one, the one on the left is in uh, English. The difference is one is running in Amsterdam. The other one is running in Israel. For our last example, we will look at Google Keep. This is a notes and lists, sets time, places, reminders. In general, it's an organizer. Here we see that they look very, very similar. The left, which is the local cloud host, and the right, which is the cloud host 3,000 kilometers away in Amsterdam. Ascender's Android in the Cloud provides a frame rate that is independent of network round-trip delays. In the next clip, we demo this frame rate independence. We will now demonstrate the frame rate independence from the latency. We see the left, which is the local system, and the right, which is the system from Amsterdam, who is real. We see here that the scrolling is very similar and smooth. In order to automate this and to have a constant frame rate, we can take a shell program, a simple shell program, and run it that will do swipes, touch swipes, First on the left system, and then we'll do it on the right system. We see that it's very similar frame rates. Uh, if you want to see what the shell script looks like, it is in the next frame. We have a problem with observing the smooth 
frame rate of 60 frames per second in a YouTube video running at 24 frames per second. The reason for this is temporal aliasing. It's caused when the sampling rate, which is 24 frames a second, is too low cons- compared to the speed of objects inside the scene. This results in jerky motions. One way to alleviate this problem is to anti-alias frames, combining frames, and a simple way to do it is to use a camera to capture the demo screen at 24 frames per second, which corresponds to the speed of the YouTube video. We now see a camera capture of the screen. The screen is at 60 frames per second, and the camera is taking pictures at 24 frames per second. Here we can clearly see that there is very little difference between the left, which is a local server, and the right, which is a server which is one million times more distant than the local server. The following frame shows one camera captured frame at 24 frames per second. Notice that two frames of the 60 frames per second video were captured when sampled at 24 frames per second. This accounts for the doubling effect when looking at one frame. In this single frame capture from the camera, we see that every camera frame actually captures more than one video frame. The reason for this is the video frames are running at 60 frames per second, and the camera is running at 24 frames per second. Notice there really is no difference between the left and the right. The frame rate on both of them are identical. Input latency is defined as the time it takes to get a response to a user input. Android in the Cloud has been carefully optimized to minimize input latency. The next demo compares the response of the system for cloud, two different cloud configurations. One is a local server with low, less than one millisecond network latency. The second system is a remote server with large, 70 millisecond network latency at a distance of over 3,000 kilometers from the client. We see that the apparent input latencies of both systems are very similar to the eye. We now will demonstrate the difference in latency between a local and a remote server. We now see the subjective response of pressing on the home button and the remote server's response. The rightmost window is approximately 70 milliseconds away. We can grab the scroll bar and pull down on it. We see that there's a lag between the moving of the scroll bar. Here we've stopped it for a few seconds and we saw a bar there. That is the lag. Now we can go over to the right window. Here's the shell window, the right window. Look at the date. It's an hour off. It's in Israel. Less than a millisecond difference. If we now do the same thing, we can press on the home button and we see the response. We go down, we see that there is still a lag. The lag is a little bit less than it was because of the difference of uh, 70 milliseconds. Okay, so we can go up, we can go down, and very, very similar response between the local and the remote systems. We have extracted and magnified the scroll bar to estimate the difference in latency between the LAN and the WAN servers. The length of the black rectangle contrasts the input latency of the two servers. The difference between the LAN and the WAN servers are not large. This is due to the remote graphics protocol design and efficient input event handling. We now show the magnified scroll bars. As before, the left scroll bar uses a local server, and the right scroll bar is the remote server. The black rectangle measures the lag time between the cursor, which is controlled by the local client, and the graphical response of the server, which is the scroll bar bubble. In conclusion, we have seen comparisons between the performance of Android in the cloud 
for local cloud servers as compared to long-haul intercontinental data links. We have demonstrated that careful design of the remote graphic protocols can minimize the effects of network latency. Both frame rate and input latency can be kept within acceptable bounds. If the protocol design is not carefully thought out, server client performance can be unacceptable even in metropolitan area networks. To become better acquainted with the full power and potential of Android in the cloud, let's talk. Thank you for listening.